completable future is an advanced version of future we have already discussed about future in our previous video in case you have missed it please check it out from the top right corner of your screen we will cover the completable future in two videos in this video we will cover these five topics so without any further delay let's begin even though the future was a big step in java multi threading but still there were many limitations associated with it so let us begin with the limitations for future before we introduce completable future as a solution the first limitation is in future we cannot mark any task completed manually even if we want to do that so if a task is submitted we can only cancel it we can not mark it completed manually future does not notify us of its completion that means we have to block the processing using get method call to see if the task is completed or not so we cannot perform any further action on the future's result without blocking now suppose one future task's output is required as an input for another future task we cannot create such workflows where multiple futures can be chained together Future API in Java also does not provide any exception handling. Suppose we have five futures that we want to run in parallel and then run some other logic after all those five futures are completed. Well, we cannot do this using future. So the solution to all these problems is completable future. Using completable future, we will be able to overcome all these limitations of future. completable future is used for asynchronous programming in this the logic runs in non blocking mode by running a task on a separate thread other than the main application thread it also notifies the main thread about its progress completion or in case any failure happened it also has a very detailed exception handling support if we check the official documentation we can notice that completable future implements future and completion stage interfaces in addition to that it provides many utility methods for creating chaining and combining multiple features we may not cover all the methods available in completable future because the list is huge we will try to cover the important and most used functionalities so let us begin with the first scenario Suppose if we want to run some background task asynchronously and that task does not return anything in that case we can use run async which is a static method present in completable future class this method takes a runnable object as a parameter and return completable future of type void this method uses thread from a global common pool now let us see a very simple code example for run async method so this is our completable future demo class so here i have created a couple of instance variables that we will be using while running the completable future functionalities the first one is runnable so in this runnable it's a very simple runnable where we have defined a sleep time of 1 second and then printing what is the name of the thread which is executing this runnable we'll discuss the supplier later when we are discussing its use case now let us see how we can use this runnable in run async method so run async method is nothing but whenever we have some task which we want to run asynchronously and that particular task does not return anything then we can make use of run async method it accepts one runnable and it will return a completable future of type void that means it will not actually return anything so let us just execute this and observe the output so what we are doing we will be uh, executing this particular runnable asynchronously in a separate thread so it will call this runnable and after 1 1000 milliseconds it should print execution done using and the name of the thread which is currently executing this runnable task so let me just execute and let's observe the output so here you can see a completable future run async demo and then execution done using the name of the thread so name of the thread is folk join pool common pool worker 1 so worker 1 is the actual thread name and common pool is the 
thread pool from which that thread is picked up. That was one of the scenario where the task is not returning anything. But if the task need to return something like we have seen in case of callable implementation. So that is our second scenario. For such cases, completable future provides another static function which is supply async. This method takes a supplier as an argument and it returns completable future of that same type. And here in the documentation, you can notice that it also uses folk join pools common pool for picking up the thread and complete the execution. Now let us just see a very simple code example for run async method. So similar to the runnable, we have defined one supplier task. So it's a supplier which should return a result in the form of string. So similar to that, we are making this particular thread sleep for one second. Then we are printing which thread is executing that name of that particular thread. And in the end, we are returning result from and then name of that particular thread again. Now let us see how it has been implemented. So in this, what we are doing, we are calling completable future dot supply async and in the parameter we are providing that supplier task. And execution of this supply async will return the result in the form of a completable future, which will return the result in the form of string. Now again, to get the complete detail what has been returned, we are printing it using supply async future dot get. Now let me execute the code, then we can observe the output. So here you can see uh, execution done using common pool worker one and result from same name of that particular thread. So this is how if we want to return something from a task, then we can make use of supply async instead of run async. Run async will only be used if we do not want to return anything or the thread execution do not return anything. So these are the very two basic functionalities provided in completable future where we can make use of two different methods based on our requirement. But have you noticed that we are not defining or providing any thread pool executor for running the task? So how does it manage that particular execution? By default, the thread pool used for executing these asynchronous tasks is a common pool from folk join. If you want to learn more about common pool from folk join, please check out the video from top right corner of your screen. Now back to the current topic. If we want, we can provide our own thread pool details. In that case, completable future will use that provider executor. For this, both run async and supply async have an overloaded method where we can provide the executor details as well in addition to runnable or supplier. Not only these two, but almost all the functions will have this variation where we can provide our own executor so that the asynchronous task execution can be done using that provided executor. So these are the most basic operations which we can do using completable future. But if you notice, we are still using a blocking call. That's not what we wanted, right? We should be able to add a callback to completable future, which should automatically get called when the future completes. We should be able to write the logic that needs to be executed after the completion of future. There are mainly three type of callbacks we can assign, which are then apply, then accept, and then run. All these callbacks have their own separate use cases. So let us discuss them one by one. Now suppose we want to process and transform a result returned from completable future when it is ready. In that case, we can use then apply. It takes a functional interface function as an argument this interface represents a function that accepts an argument of type T and produce a result of type R. Now let us see a very simple code example using then apply to chain multiple callbacks together. So now let us see the implementation of then apply. So then apply will come into effect when we are already having one function chained and then we can apply some more function on the result of that. 
So let us see with an example. So in this, first we are doing completable future dot supply async and then we are providing a supplier task. So if you remember from the previous example, this should return a string type of result. So suppose once this result is returned from the task, we want to do some transformation or add something or modify something in that text. To do that in the chained manner, we can use then apply. So just after that, we can chain another operation, which is then apply. And inside that, we can provide a function. It's a Lambda expression, which will define the implementation of function. So in this, what we are doing, we are just adding some extra string to the already coming message. So here, what we are doing, we are adding this string, adding hello from then apply and concatenating it with the message coming from supply async. And this value will be returned. As it's a function, it takes one argument and also it returns something as well. Now again, if we want to see what we have returned in the end, we need to have a get call. With this, what we are expecting? We are expecting that first this supply async will be executed and one message will be returned, which is like result from and name of the thread. And once that is completed, then automatically this then apply will also be executed by adding this string in front of that. And now let us just execute this code and observe the output. So here you can see first the execution is done. So this is getting printed from the supplier itself. And after that, if you see, this was the original result from supplier. You can see the output just above that. And after that, using then apply, we have transformed that output by adding this string in that. Okay, now we know that uh, this asynchronous execution of supply async that will be running in a separate thread from folk join pool. So how about this then apply? So how this particular execution will be done? Will it be done in the same thread or a new thread will be populated or it will be done using the main thread? These are very simple callbacks which will run either in the same thread of supply async or the main thread. But completable future also provides a functionality to run the callbacks in a separate thread in asynchronous mode. For that, we have then apply async. So if you see, we already have then apply async. And similar to the other methods, first one is without executor. So this will automatically take a thread from common pool. And it has one overloaded method where we can provide our own executor. And using that thread pool, then this particular task will be executed. Now we have seen that then apply can be used if we need to return something from the callback. Now there is another scenario. Suppose if we do not want to return anything and just want to execute some logic after the completion of previous future. In that case, we can use then accept and then run methods. Then accept method take consumer as an argument. So if you remember, consumer is a functional interface which takes an argument but does not return anything. And similarly, then run will accept a runnable. So we know that runnable does not return anything. So just if we want to execute something and do not want to return something in the end, then we can make use of then accept and then run callbacks. Now let us see a very simple example of then accept and then runnable as well. So similar to the previous one, this is then accept. So it requires a consumer. So consumer we have defined using this Lambda expression. So what it is doing, it is just consuming whatever is coming in the message and printing accepting message and content of that message. And after that, using get call, we are just making sure that everything runs and printed on the console. And similar to this, using then run, we just need to provide the implementation of runnable, which will be a Lambda expression again, but it will not accept anything because the run method does not accept any argument. So in this, if we just wanted to print like something has completed or uh, some final message that we want to print. So in that case, we can use then run. So if you see both of these methods do not return anything. 
So why do we have two different methods doing the same thing? Now there is a difference. Suppose when future has produced one output and based on that output we want to perform some action and do not want to return anything but based on the result we want to perform something in that case we can use then accept because then accept will have access to whatever result is produced using future but if you see in case of then run it will never have access to the result produced by the previous future so this supply async, it will produce a string, but in then run, we will not be able to access that result. But if you see in case of then accept, we are able to access that result, which is produced from the previous execution of future. So the main difference between these two is then accept can access the result of completable future on which it is attached to, but then run cannot access the future's result. Now how to manage these callbacks execution on same thread or different threads? For that similar to then apply async we have then accept async and then run async which will make the callbacks run in separate threads asynchronously. There also we can provide our own executor if we want to. These were just few functionalities provided by a completable future. Please check out the official Oracle documentation to learn more about these functionalities. Link is given in the description. If you want, you can access all the code that we have covered in this multi-threading series from the below link. In the next part, we will conclude completable future by covering how to combine multiple futures together for different use cases and how we can implement proper exception handling using completable future. The concepts that we have learned today in this video will be used in the next one also. So if you have any doubt, please let me know in the comment section. If this video helped you to gain some knowledge today, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also press the bell icon to get more regular updates. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.